G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Thursday morning here in Australia and the market continues to go down. So we got to that $3 trillion mark and now we are seeing a, not a heavy retracement, but a reasonable retracement nonetheless. 3.4% at the moment and look, still falling. Now I did show this the other day, there is a CME gap for Bitcoin down at kind of sort of 62-ish thousand dollars, down to around about sort of $61,000. I'm not going to be surprised if this doesn't close by the end of this week. Now again, I'm not saying it will, I'm never, never gonna offer you financial advice, but a lot of these close, and just because we're at all time highs, people are very kind of skeptical. You know, we got basically up to that $70,000 range, oh so close, you know, 69,300. And then we came back down uh, and we are currently sitting just under kind of uh, 65, oh, we're sitting about 65 and a half thousand, 64,000, depending on sort of, uh, sorry, I'm looking at the CME chart, uh, just under $65,000 as you can see here. So what are we, 64,900, there we go, 65, sitting basically on 65,000. So obviously, you know, pe people are just very wary at the moment, particularly people who've been in a while, they start getting into new all-time highs. People start to take profits because they're thinking, you know, this could be the end. But then again, it's also people getting long in the market. Now it's going short and it's getting people shaken out. There is going to be a lot of volatility heading from here on in until we get to whatever high it is. That's just the way it's going to be. Because again, I've said this, everyone is expecting that, oh, you know, it's going to play out like 2013, 2017 and things like that. I don't think it will. I think once it's done you'll be able to look back in hindsight and say it was similar but it's not going to play out exactly the same i don't think we're going to have the top in december i think we have the top later or earlier that's the scary part is it could come earlier it could come in the next kind of two weeks or something and again it's not financial advice it's never going to be that that i provide you i'm not a financial advisor i'm just not sure the big players will want that now i think it's less likely that it comes earlier because we still have so many big players getting in and really the big players got into Bitcoin somewhere around sort of 30,000 to around about sort of $60,000 thereabouts. So I couldn't imagine there's too many big players that are going to want to dump it from here. They're going to want to push it much higher. But it's just something to keep in mind. So just again, just consider that maybe it's not going to play out like everyone expects it to simply because so many people are expecting it to play out like that. But you know, we'll have to wait and see. Time is the greatest storyteller, unfortunately. There is nobody who can truly predict. Like, I really like Plan B. I uh, love his stock-to-flow models and things like that. But I'm just not sure they will play out exactly like that. They'll be similar. I, I'm, I'll say that. But I just don't think they'll kind of be exact. There will be deviations and variations because, again, so many people are expecting that. All right, but anyway, let's move on. So market, there we can see it's, it was only 3%. Now it's down even more. So now it's 5.4% the market is down. Now Bitcoin dominance rising, so people are getting spooked out inside the altcoins and things like that. A little bit of volume, again, to be expected. And look at the gas prices. Good Lord, $41. You wouldn't want to be doing anything on Ethereum right now. That is crazy. And again, that is people jumping in and out of uh, stable coins and things like that and some nft news as well that's going to have uh something to do with it as well all right so again looks like a bit of a sea of red not much green there but there's always going to be outliers so what's performed well in the last 24 hours considering the market's down 5.4 percent well there you go uh iotx up 80 percent cadena still going up 11 percent mina protocol loop ring doing quite nice Look, a couple of nice movers, but we can see in the top 100, and a lot of these are kind of, well, not a lot, but a few of those are stable coins and things like that. Not many movers at all, but IOTX, wow, what a move. That's almost 100% in 24 hours, but we can see it tapering off. Will it continue to pump? I'm not sure. And again, something going on with MENA protocol as well. So definitely some movers, but... We're down 5.4%, and again, we're up at $3 trillion, so this is probably not gonna look too pretty. 
there we go, double digit losses, you know, right across the board. The graph down 20%. SHIB dumped another 15%. I mean, that is really just falling crazily at the moment. And again, it's because there's not a lot of people owning SHIB and the biggest wallets hold the most. So they only need to dump a little bit and the price really starts to dump. And then unfortunately, you know, new people who came in, you will usually panic sell and Again, I don't know whether, you know, panic selling is the right or wrong option with SHIB, but that is the problem with these coins, particularly a coin where 70% of the circulating supply is held in 10 wallets. Yeah, that's obviously very centralized, and so people are unfortunately going to get wrecked. You know, Ravencoin down, Curve Finance, Phantom. I mean, look at these double-digit losses, double-digit, double-digit. I mean, we've got to go down to 25 of the top 100 before 23 now before we can start getting into single digits and even still a ton a ton of high single digit losses right there so yeah a little bit scary but you know for me and again never financial advice i hate having to say that but i have to is i just wouldn't panic at the moment this is just again we hit that three trillion dollar mark this is what the sale was based on it wasn't so much the prices of individual coins or bitcoin itself i think it was really this because we got over that three trillion it was 3.05 trillion and almost not long after that is when the sell-off happened so again don't always base your sales on the price of just a single coin but then again don't price based just on the total market cap as well there's a whole stack of different things that will play into effect on what might be happening now let's have a look at the bitcoin chart and then we'll have a look at some stories that might uh, give us some idea of what's going on as well so here's the bitcoin chart again we were looking at around about eighty-eight thousand if this was to play out and it still could but gee we've had a heavy correction i mean basically all the gains we made uh what was this back on the 8th of november have just about been <laughs> taken out right there. Look at that one big candle, uh, a bit of its wicks, both to the top and the downside. Uh, not as much body, but poof, there we go. I'd say a lot of longs probably got wrecked there. There's some shorting going on. And again, also just profit taking and people getting nervous. That's my take on what's happening at the moment. Now, I do expect us to continue to go up, but it's not just going to shoot up like this. This is the target of where I think it'll get to, 88, 89,000. But look, we might have to travel sideways and do a whole lot of funky stuff before we get up there. So that's my take on the moment. I'm not panicking. I am glad. Look, I've and this was just a fluke. It was not anything, I won't say a fluke, but it was just, there was a lot of luck involved. Because I saw the market at $3 trillion and I just thought, oh, it's a big round number. I'll probably take just a tiny bit of profits. And I did. And look, it's paid off quite well now because I can take those profits and uh, buy back in at uh, some fairly good prices. But in all fairness, I don't think we're done yet. I think we are going to come down and probably cover this $61,000, dollars mark in Bitcoin sometime this week. And that will be uh, some pretty big discounts on the altcoins if you're leaning that way. But again, never financial advice. That's just what I'm suspecting will happen. No guarantees in life. This could just shoot up tomorrow and then we start making our way up here. But I just get the feeling like we are going to come back down and cover that CME gap. And it'll probably be sometime over this week. I think if we you know, stand true to what normally happens is the weekend uh, we will hit the low. Uh, it could come early though. Again, maybe sort of Friday, Saturday. Uh, and then we pump through Sunday, which has been happening. This market chops and changes so much. And yeah, I think, yeah, it's, it's just going to be interesting. Very, very interesting. But again, yeah, I think we do come down, unfortunately, before we start to go back up. But time will tell. All right. This is some sort of good news for Bitcoin, but also sort of bad news for people as well. So Bitcoin jumped to its new all-time high as inflation spikes to 6.2% in October. Now, what they're looking at is even here in Australia, the banks are looking at raising uh, rates here in Australia to sort of, you know, combat some of the inflation and things like that and to get people, um, you know, back into the i don't know if it's really to get back into the dollar but anyway they're going to boost up rates and that's really going to hurt people who've got loans home loans and things like that and this this is where things could start to get ugly 
Now that, you know, people have talked about, you know, things are going to pop, particularly here in Australia, like we're in one of the biggest housing bubbles ever seen. What we pay per square metre for real estate here in Australia, you know, it'll give places like, you know, New York, Paris and London a run for their money. And that's all of Australia. Just in general, we're going to give those places a run for their money. Now, that doesn't mean all of Australia is just at New York, uh, uh, Paris and London prices, but in general, sort of by comparison, it basically is. We pay a ton for housing here in Australia, and I am worried for house owner, uh, house, house, house owners, because if they raise the rights, the rates. Sorry, God, I'm struggling again today. Then things are going to go up, and maybe we're going to start seeing some sell-offs because. You know, we've had lockdowns, people in all sorts of financial strife here in Australia. You now raise the rates. Yeah, we could be in a bit of strife, particularly the housing market. In all fairness, uh, that might be the thing that brings, you know, Australian housing prices down a little bit. I don't think we're going to have any major crash, but definitely something to consider. And again, great for Bitcoin because inflation just keeps going up but unfortunately not so good for other aspects of our daily lives. Again, fuel at the moment in Australia is ridiculous. $1.70 a litre. Um, yeah, the price of just everything is crazy. You know, trying to buy cars at the moment, full stop. Even secondhand cars are at all-time highs. As uh, I spoke about the other day, you know, it's the inflation bubble of everything. You know, everything is at all-time highs at the moment. I don't know if there's anything that's not, so... Crazy times. All right, moving on. Stablecoin Tether. All right, so they have now launched on the Avalanche Network. So again, you know, it looks like they've got their act together, getting regulated, but they're also branching out onto other networks. So Tether, doing the right things and making the right moves. So, you know, good for the crypto space. But again, we we'll still have to wait and see what happens with stablecoin regulation. I reckon that's where the regulation is going to be the toughest. I said that yesterday. And I've said that a couple of times before, and I think that is something that's going to, it, it will hurt the market in the short term. In the long term, uh, we'll have to wait and see. But Tether, moving, and look how much Tether is out there now. So the stablecoin Tether has launched a myriad on a myriad of blockchains uh, and networks, so it's all over the place now. And there's over seven, 74.8 billion tethers in circulation today so they are still quite large in the stablecoin game and again look in all fairness we need we need tether to work if they were to you know get crushed and all the rest of it and it turns out it was a scam and a fake and all the rest of it it would hurt the crypto industry uh, again not so much in the long term crypto will always recover from kind of things like this but in the short term definitely could so for tether to get their act together, get ordered, to get regulated, regulated, start you know abiding by you know all the rules and regulations out there is good, and that they're launching on Avalanche now uh, will only help strengthen their position. But it does seem like USDC is the one that's sort of favoured by the politicians. So we'll wait and see if they can continue gaining ground, or if Tether again now that they're hopefully getting their act together will just you know remain the market leader. All right, NFTs. Every time I think, you know, NFTs are probably kind of done and they're going to have a little pullback, you know, you'll hear some more news. So here, record producer Steve Aoki and Spawn creator Todd McFarlane are going to launch their own Solana-powered NFT marketplace. So, yeah, NFTs, they just never stop. And, uh, you know, now we've got really big names coming out trying to make their own sort of marketplaces. Everyone wants to give OpenSea a run for their money. And, you know, OpenSea had a few issues with sort of insider uh, trading uh, stuff going on. But they're still, you know, the biggest one out there uh, by a country mile at the moment. So can, yeah, Steve Aoki and Todd McFarlane come out with a bigger one? I don't know. Uh, I do like Todd McFarlane's uh, art. I'm a bit of a uh, comic nerd. Uh, not embarrassed by it, but you know, you don't openly come out and sort of tell too many people that. You know, I'm a 40 plus year old uh, man who still likes comics, uh, but you know, I don't read comics so much. I definitely used to when I was young. I collect more for uh, the artwork these days, but I definitely do still uh, like to keep up to date with comics and particularly all the Marvel movies. Uh, there's not really been many that I haven't liked 
at all. Anyway, moving on, even more news when it comes to NFT. So the Rolling Stones have minted their first ever NFT and it's had a Bored Ape Yacht Club. So Rolling Stone magazine, there you go. And they have got a Bored Ape Yacht Club on there. Now it says down here, uh, auctioning two digital magazine covers created in partnership with the Bored Ape Yacht Club. The collaboration between the magazine and the Red Hot NFT Collective debuted in physical form a week ago with an instant sale of 2,500 limited edition uh, paper, uh, I think that's paper magazines, uh, featuring a Bored Ape Yacht Club uh, iconic Rolling Stone magazine cover on the front. Now, the covers are the first of seven planned NFT releases by Rolling Stone in collaboration with Board 8 Yacht Club's creators. The remaining five digital pieces will be created by various NFT artists and feature signature Board 8 Yacht Clubs. Now, one actually had the mutant one. So it says here, The Economist sold one of its covers as an NFT for $419,000 just two weeks ago. Time released multiple digital covers earlier this year. And the New York Times took in half a million dollars in March for an NFT column. Now the Board 8 Yacht Clubs uh, are going at about 10 ETH at the moment. They're being auctioned. So there's two of them. There's the Mutant 8 one and there's uh, the regular one. And yeah, NFTs just continue to grow. Every time I think that this is the time where they're going to sort of cool off and there's going to be a big pullback, it just doesn't happen. Something new comes out. All right. Crypto Twitter now have a dedicated team that are aimed at exploring dApps and more. So again, Jack Dorsey's really been pushing you know, crypto, more Bitcoin than anything else. But now Twitter itself has a fully dedicated crypto team and it says here the team would be working with twitter's blue sky project on a decentralized social media platform as well as exploring ideas uh exploring how ideas from crypto communities with decentralization and things like that can help us push the boundaries of what's possible with identity community ownership and more so again jack dorsey's team really leading the push you know they added Bitcoin tipping to Twitter. You can verify your NFT, your NFTs now, and things like that. So the space is growing extremely fast. I mean, it really does feel like we've hit a kind of hyperbolic kind of trend in crypto in general. Uh, and again, these hyperbolic trends doesn't mean that sort of overnight in the, the next week or month or two everything just goes sky high. But it's just a prolonged projected uptrend. Now, whether it plays out exactly like that really is something that we'll have to wait and see. And it's hard to kind of say that at the moment with prices, uh, again, pulling back. But again, you know, we had a pretty good pump. I mean, you look, we were just edging up. And so this really is just something like this, but bigger because we had the bigger pump. Again, I think this gap down here probably gets covered over the next kind of few days. I mean, we got very close. We're not too far off it right now, but I think we come down, close it. Uh, maybe today, maybe tomorrow, I think it gets closed this week and then we start to make our way back up. But it doesn't just rocket back up. Again, it just keeps slowly stepping up and then down and up and then down and then up and then down. And it's these kind of patterns that will continue to play out until we really do get some kind of you know, big parabolic move. Again, very similar to 2013 uh, and 2017 where it just spiked right up and then we get that heavy retracement. But if the hyper, you know, Bitcoinization thing plays out, then it'll just continue going up. Still have big swings up and down, but, very, you know, the down won't last that long. Again, I'm still now wondering whether this is the new uh, bear market where it basically lasts a few months. You retrace about 50% uh, and then it keeps going up until, again, we get to whatever price maybe Bitcoin's, you know, kind of peaks out peaks out at and then it really is just level a million dollars ten million dollars you know five hundred thousand whatever it may be i think we're you know if we go into that hyper parabolic bitcoin state i think again we just keep going up with big retracements until we get to the blow off top whatever it may be we have a big 50 to 80 percent correction from there and then again we just sort of stabilize and it'll be very interesting to see uh if that plays out exactly what bitcoins you know peak price will be and then when it kind of comes back to its fair value because still a lot of people say a million dollars it's basically programmed in and there's still people out there saying 10 million so i mean you know if we go into this hyper parabolic state could bitcoin get to something silly like you know 20 25 million dollars 
and then have a you know 80 percent correction and come back down to something like i don't know five million dollars and then kind of just be fairly stable from there again never financial advice i'm not saying that's what's going to happen it'd just be interesting to see if something like that did happen all right that's it for me stay safe be kind to one another pretty hard to be on the game train at the moment but i don't think uh it's over just yet and i'll see you next time